Dr. Schaefer, good to see you again. Thanks for joining you. us here on Health Connection. The title of our segment, I'm going to read it, The Obesity Paradox, A Myth for Diabetics. I'm going to learn something here today. What is the obesity paradox? In 2012, in a respected medical journal, Journal of the American Medical Association, there was a study involving 2,500 patients that showed that individuals that were obese or overweight when they were diagnosed with diabetes lived longer than those that were of normal body weight, which was completely contrary to expectations and what we've been teaching our, our patients. Uh, the, the conventional wisdom is that the more you weigh, the more likely you are to die. But in this particular study, it showed just the opposite. You were almost twice as likely to die if you were normal weight when you were diagnosed with diabetes than if you were overweight or obese. Well, as you just said, that seems contrary to what we have, what we have understood about being overweight and its impact it has on health. So explain the science behind the obesity paradox. Well, the, the, probably the most important aspect of the science is that it was not very good science. Uh, in contrast to newer studies, this was a relatively small study involved about 2,500 people, which sounds like a lot of people, but they actually had to combine five smaller studies in order to, to get this sample size. And one thing they did not control for well was smoking. We know that if you have two people with diabetes, say age 60, and if one smokes and the other does not smoke, the smoker will weigh less than the non-smoker. Despite the fact that the smoker weighs less, uh, that individual who's a smoker will die sooner than the individual who's heavier with diabetes who doesn't smoke. So by not controlling for smoking, they actually created a, a situation where it appeared that leaner individuals had a better life expectancy. In reality, the thinking is that those leaner individuals were lean because they were smokers. Okay. What did, there was a study published January 2014 in the New England Journal of Medicine. What did it find regarding weight, diabetes, and premature death? Well, this was a study involving over 11,000 individuals follow, uh, prospectively followed nurses and physicians over a 15-year period of time and looked at their chances of dying over this period of time and related that to their, to their weight as measured by BMI or body mass index. And it actually showed what we expected to see in the first place is that the heavy, heavier you are when you're diagnosed with diabetes, the more likely you are to die. The ideal BMI was a body mass index between say 22 and 25, so that would be a five foot eight person that weighs between 140 and 160, for example. If you weighed a little bit above that, you had a little bit more chance of dying, and if you weighed a lot more than that, you had a lot more chance of dying. The other part of the study, which actually wasn't a surprise, it showed that if you were very, very skinny, very, very lean, that also increased your chance of dying, but that was not considered paradoxical because we know that being um, too underweight increases your risk of dying. And actually, the individuals that are really lean and really skinny often are that way because they have an underlying disease and may indeed be at the end stage of their disease, such as heart failure or chronic kidney failure, for example. Well, that New England Journal study, why was it significant for type 2 diabetes? Well, because they really focused on that particular population of individuals. That, uh, and it, and it, it helped affirm the fact that people with type 2 diabetes, if they want to extend their life, need to lose weight. The previous study would have suggested that weight loss was not important, which in some respects might have been good news because weight loss is, is very difficult. Although, truth be known, I did not have any patients that came in and said that they no longer felt like they needed to lose weight because most people want to lose weight because they look better and not because of the, the health consequences. But it, it affirms that we do need to focus on weight loss in order to uh, prolong longevity. Well, so did, did the study prove that the uh, obesity paradox is a myth in general? or just that being overweight with type 2 diabetes causes premature death? Well, no one study proves anything. Just like the study that 
that uh, resulted in the so-called uh, obesity paradox did not prove that being uh, thin was more dangerous than, than being overweight. It just suggested that this study does not, does not prove that uh, weighing more absolutely is going to uh, cause you to die quicker, but it certainly makes it seem much, much more likely. So uh, I, for practical purposes, I think we can put the obesity paradox to rest in individuals with type 2 diabetes. There may be other diseases where the dynamics are different, and we can't necessarily say that. Let's just refresh. So the, we, we've talked about this in previous diabetes segments. Let's bring it up again. What's going on physically that causes someone who is overweight to develop type 2 diabetes? Well, the more you weigh, the more insulin your body needs to produce in order to keep blood sugar normal. Now, many, if not most people, are able to produce that extra amount of insulin to compensate for their obesity. But a significant part of the population have a pancreas that's not able to produce these very large amounts of insulin to compensate for their weight. So these individuals who usually inherit this tendency of having a pancreas that's not able to be a hypersecretor of insulin, these individuals will de develop diabetes as they, as they gain weight. And it depends on how rapidly the weight is gained and at, at what age um, an individual starts uh, gaining the weight. But basically it's a matter of weight increasing the body's need for insulin. Do we have any studies, do we have any math, do we know uh, any numbers, how many years on average being a type 2 diabetic and overweight can take from a person's lifespan? The way to get the best answer from that is not from the medical literature, but it's from insurance companies. And they know, they know exactly how much having a particular disease will affect your life expectancy. That's how they determine our rates. For an individual at age uh, 50 that develops type 2 diabetes will lose on average eight and a half years of their life expectancy. The older you are when you develop diabetes, the less life expectancy you have and the less you will lose. A 60-year-old loses about five years of life expectancy, and a 90-year-old actually loses about one year. The disturbing thing is that if you extrapolate that to the younger generation, individuals that are 20, 30, or 40 that develop diabetes will lose proportionately more of their life expectancy. If a 50-year-old loses eight years, a 20-year-old may lose 15 right. or 20 years. And a child who develops type 2 diabetes may lose, may lose, uh, may lose even more. It, it's that simple fact that results in the observation that children born today in this generation are the first generation in perhaps 200 years that will have a life expectancy that is less than their parents' generation. And this is something completely new that we haven't experienced. Medical science has really caused us to go the opposite direction, prolong life expectancy, but we're actually seeing a reversal. That's actually a shocking statistic, it, isn't it? It is. It is indeed. Especially wow. for Well, our so kids today. overweight diabetic, want to lose the weight. Is there a best way to lose the weight, or will any calorie cutting plan work just as well? If there was a best way, everyone would be doing it, and, and it would be happening. There, there is not a best way. Of course, I get asked this many, many times per day. Uh, the way that seems to be uh, the most positive approach for most people is one that they can stick with, that has structure, that incorporates uh, lifestyle change that they enjoy doing. If a person enjoys walking or some sort of physical activity, uh, they're more likely to do that over the long term. So we're talking about something that needs to occur for the rest of our lives and not just for the next three months. So if you can identify a particular uh, a diet or uh, therapeutic lifestyle change that incorporates diet and activity that you can do over the long haul, that is the one that will be most successful for you. Doctor, as always, I learned something. Thank you very much. My pleasure.